can't do it at all. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you all. Hey, feel free to type in the chat where you where you are and um, one of your favorite landscapes or more. And we'll just wait uh, two or three minutes because people always hop on right on the top of the hour. Thank you for being here on time. All right, Linda, welcome from Lethbridge, Alberta, Rocky Mountain foothills. So if you're just joining us, type in where you are and what's a favorite landscape of yours. Joe from Hawaii, she loves ocean and mountains. Janet in San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. Love that one. Uh, Bonnie, hi Bonnie from Bremerton, Puget Sound. Linda Swan calling in from Montana. She loves the mountains. Alyssa, hi Alyssa, Olympic Nat National Park. Oh gosh, I can't keep up. Okay, we're typing in where we are and what your favorite landscape is since we're making a pop-up landscape and maybe you'll be inspired to make the landscape you're typing in. Acadia National Park, uh, mountains and oceans, Galveston, the seaside, awesome. Cynthia, welcome from Bulgaria in a forest. There's a gale blowing and trees are blowing over. Oh my gosh, <laughs> still her favorite. Stay safe. Uh, the Lake Michigan Beach, so Sedona. I haven't been to Sedona yet. Yeah, but I need you have to yeah. And uh, please mute yourself. I have to get back to there. And... All right. Let's, uh, I'm going to wait one more minute. If you're just joining us, we're typing in where we are and our favorite landscape, since we'll be making a pop-up landscape. Wonderful. Uh, National Park Hatchy Wet Wildlife Refuge. Awesome. So there's so many landscapes. Uh, Martha's Vineyard, the Lagoon. San Francisco, the white sand beach with turquoise water. Beautiful. It's nice to uh, envision all of these places in my head. Flowers. Yay, Beth. Coming up on spring. We just got snow yesterday, but it's, it's, uh, it's spring here. It's in between winter and spring. All right. Hey, I'm going to get started. I'm Helen. Welcome to everybody. And um, I'm going to do a short PowerPoint telling you about the paper year. Uh, I know some of my members are here too, which is wonderful. And then we'll make the pop-up landscape card. And then I'll answer any questions you have. And um, at the end, we will do, we'll all come on video if you're comfortable doing that and show your pop-up landscape card. And we'll do a few screenshots and highlights of what people make. So again, thank you for being here. No, and if, Helen, yeah. One thing is with this number of participants, if people uh, turn off their video, it'll increase the bandwidth and have better reception. Yeah, so if you can do that right now in the bottom left corner of your Zoom screen, just mute yourself and stop your video. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. All right. And I try to change the images every time because some of you come to all of these. <laughs> So um, here we go. Just going to tell you a little bit about myself. Okay, my screen isn't advancing. Hang on a second. Let me see. Hmm. Neither keyboard's working. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and try it again. There we go. 
All right. Um, We're not seeing your screen. Oh, you're not? No. Hmm. Share screen. I see it. There, okay. now we are. Okay. Okay, you still see it now? Yeah, but you know what, Helen? We saw your, your whole desktop, which makes me think you, you wanted to share the PowerPoint, not the desktop. Try, try advancing it, see if it works. Yeah. Okay, great. great. Okay. No problem. Okay, Whew. all right. So I got interested in paper back in 1986 when I took a course about paper at the University of Mainz in Germany on a junior year abroad program. And that's where my interest got sparked in paper as a material and all of the ways that you can manipulate it. Here you see a variety of ways that I've manipulated it over the years. I'm fascinated in shrinkage, which the lamp with the bell base is uh, shrunken abaco pulp. And then books, that middle image is a book called Uniform Pop-Ups also. And then on the right is a lantern and I'm fascinated with paper and light. Oh, it's not advancing. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys. I have to stop to even do anything. So, huh, all right, well, I'll try one more time. And let me know if you have any ideas, Lori. Um, just make sure that you're, you're sharing the PowerPoint. Okay, there okay. we go. Yeah, that's it. Okay, fingers yeah. crossed. Um, a brief trip to J Japan a couple of years later ignited my interest when I saw all, all of the papers made by hand just in, uh, in shops there. And I decided then and there that I was going to learn how to make paper by hand, knowing that they did that in Japan. Little did I know they were that um, there was a professional paper making studio in New York City where I moved after college called Dudonet Paper Mill. And I ended up moving to uh, working there for six years. This is a project that I did several years later. Um, I worked with this poet, Carl Adamschick, who wrote a beautiful poem. And this is a one sheet uh, book with uh, what I call a shoji screen, uh, that laser cut um, image that creates a window, which he wrote about. Okay, good. So I actually fell into writing how-to books. It's not something I sought out, but I have written six now. And I really love uh, thinking about how things are made and writing how they are made. So it suits my personality. And many of you know about my new book, The Art of Papercraft. Um, by the way, Lori's dropped some links into the chat. And I will. we are recording this and we'll send you the replay. So all the links will be sent to you. Um, where you can find this book. And there are links on my website of where you can purchase this around the world. So you don't have to purchase it from me unless you want an autographed copy. And um, I love designing with paper and sharing ideas for transforming it from two into three dimensions. And the paper year is the membership program that I started in January of 2021 to inspire participants with a new monthly technique and project. In addition to gaining skills for working with paper, you'll become part of a paper loving community. I'm so inspired by what happens in our online classroom and I know you will be too. Here are some highlights from last year. We started out doing a little paper weaving onto a sculpted paper form. And then we made paper cloth pocketbooks in February. And in March, we had a guest artist, Susan Joy Share, who showed us how to create a matchbook structure. Each quarter, we have a guest artist who designs the project. So I love high highlighting what other artists do. I do this in my how-to books as well and on my blog. Later in the year, we created envelope photo albums wallpaper pocketbooks with guest artist Paula Beardell-Krieg, 
and patchwork wall hangings. We are always exploring different ways to work with paper as well as different types of paper. And that is really fun to see what each member, how they use different papers and um, try the project in different ways, adding their own unique techniques and elements. This year, so far, we've explored this star box with the guest artist or designed by guest artist Isabel Uria. And this year I added some new techniques or not new um, features. And one of them is uh, monthly motivation to um, ex encourage further exploration on the monthly project. And in January, we took apart existing packaging and re recreated these objects in other papers. So you see Joe on the left took apart a tea bag box and recreated it in these lovely papers. Louisa took a panettone fruit bread box apart and she added the cutouts. So she, she did another element. And then I took a takeout box apart and created this lantern. In February, we explored the slice form construction. This was the project that um, I introduced a slice form heart and then members took it to um, the next level. So Ashisha lives in Santa Fe. This is Taos Pueblo. And Sia created this interesting structure, which actually um, can't remember what you call it, but you can, you can uh, put things on it. It's a display stand. And then Ramsey created this unique skyline. And this, this month, March, we're at the tail end, we're exploring stitching on paper. And the monthly motivation was to make a sampler. So Susan's example here on the left is a sampler and Deborah and Janet, um, Janet's is the closest to what I introduced and Deborah's is completely different. So again, it's really exciting to see how people take the projects and go in different directions and you receive so much um, inspiration from what others are doing. This year, we also added a quarterly surface design workshop. I wanna catch up with myself here, kind of gone off script. Um, so uh, to enhance our papers prior to working with them. So you can do so much on flat sheets of paper and, and then transform those into the objects we're exploring. So this past quarter, Susan Joy Cher was a guest artist and showed us how she embellishes her papers with rubbings or frottage and acrylic and watercolor. By the way, if you join as a new member um, now in April, um, you will get access to all of the paper year library. So all past projects and recordings of workshops. So just briefly, there are two plans, the all-in plan and the PDF plan. And all of this is outlined on the registration page, which is in, the link is in the chat along with a video about the paper year. But in brief, this is a subscription program. The PDF program is $10 a month and subscribers receive just that, a PDF with instructions for the monthly project. The all-in plan is $30 a month and subscribers get the PDF and they also get video instructions and a couple of monthly Zoom meetings that I'll show, talk about in a moment. Here's an example of a partial PDF. So you get all of the information you need to create the project as, uh, along with step-by-step -step instructions. And then here's an example of uh, what the video look like, looks like. Um, most videos are about 30 minutes. This one was a little bit shorter, 15. And you also have access, this is in the all-in plan, to our online community where we share our work, you get to ask questions, and we provide each other with supportive feedback and share tips and tricks. All-in plan members meet on Zoom twice a month. We'll have a special guest at our monthly Zoom meeting, which will either be a guest artist, a paper supplier, or a surface design workshop instructor. We also have a two hour monthly open studio Zoom session where you can carve out time to complete the project 
or work on a variation, hang out and or share your work or a technique with other members. And here's a sneak peek of what we'll be doing during the, the next quarter. Um, the, the next project delivers on the first Monday of the month. So that will be Monday, this coming Monday, April 4th. And we'll be creating a fluted paper vessel in April with guest artist, Lisa Merkin. And um, I always share ideas for variations and members often come up with their own paper twists on the monthly project. In May, we'll explore bendable paper, which has many variations. And in June, we'll make tiny homes, a project designed by, my, by Deborah Glantz um, for my book, The Art of Papercraft. And our second quarterly surface design workshop will be jelly printing with Allie Manning, who runs the Handmade Book Club. I know some of you are, know her or are members of her group too. So that's the paper year in a nutshell. Uh, again, if you join now, registration is open. It's open right now through April 10th and you'll gain access to all of our past projects, the paper library. And uh, please visit the link that's in the chat to watch my video trailer, read more and register if you're interested. And feel free to email me if you have any questions or you can ask questions at the end of this session. And I hope you'll join us as we transform paper in a variety of ways. So now let's make the pop-up landscape card. All right. So you can switch over to my hands. Yay. All right, so hopefully you have the materials. Um, there is a link in the chat. If for some reason you don't, you can grab them now or get them afterwards and just watch now. Uh, this is the template that you should have printed out. And I'm gonna go through the parts and pieces, which hopefully you have prepared as well. Here's the card just again in action. And so you just need the base card, which is half of an eight and a half by 11. So four and a quarter by 11. And then you should have this template piece with a piece of paper that you're going to cut it out of. This one with a piece to cut, this one, and then the final one. Okay, so we're going to cut them out in order and actually attach them to our card base in order. So the first thing you need is your card base and it does need to be folded in half this way. So it opens like this. So um, just fold it in half or score and fold it. Um, just looking. See if we have any questions. No, good. All right, and then we're going to, so you'll need um, scissors or an X-Acto and a pencil and a glue stick. I'm gonna use scissors. And the first, so we're gonna cut out, I've, I've numbered my pieces if you want to. Number one is the taller of the two little mountain shapes. So um, you're gonna take that and uh, the front has the printing on it. So you're either gonna trace it on the front of your project paper, or if you don't wanna deal with having to erase, flip your paper over, flip your template over and trace on the back. Okay, and since my sheet is square, I'm gonna take advantage of the straight lines, but you can just put it in the middle of your paper and trace around. So basically I'm going to trace this piece and then cut it out. And if you have any questions, um, Lori's here assisting me. Um, uh, I see, okay. The size of the base is four and a quarter inches by 11 inches. Yeah, the long edge is 11 inches. And this one is going to be placed. So we're building from the back forward. We're gonna do this piece very last. We're, we're doing this piece right now, okay? 
So this is the, the back piece that you'll see the least of. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. So I'll give you a moment to do that. Now I'm gonna mention one thing for, um, and by the way, you could make this with the template if you want to the first time, you could just use the template pieces. Um, for pop-ups to work, you really need uh, the lines to be parallel like they are on the template. So just um, keep that in mind as we move along. The folds work best if everything is straight and parallel. So I'm going to be folding by hand, but I'm and and um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that in mind that everything's parallel. So um, let me see. Look up or raise your hand if you're. Oh no, you're not on video. Maybe you can do a reaction that you're ready to move on. There's a, a hands up reaction will stay there longer so we can get it. The, the thumbs up will disappear quickly. So that gives us, it's harder for us to see it, but the hand up stays up until it's removed. So that gives us a better idea of how many people are ready. And that's on the bottom of your screen under reactions. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to fold it also or no? Uh, I'm going to show you. Okay. We'll do it together. OK. OK. All right, I'm going to move on. Yeah. So now you can, um, your template is a guide for folding, but you, re you really don't need it. Just watch what I do. So I have the front side up. I want to do a mountain fold. So I'm going to fold it backside to backside. I'm sorry, I chose a paper that's really <laughs> hard to see. So you see my pattern on there and the back is plain. So I'm folding it in half, aligning those two edges. And then I need to fold these little tabs, which are about a quarter of an inch or a little less than a centimeter. And I'm going to do that lining up the bottom edge so it's uh, straight and or parallel to my center fold. That's what I was talking about before. So now I've got this and I'm looking at the back. If you did it the wrong way, you can just reverse your folds. Here's the front with those two tabs tucked behind. Okay, I'm going to take my glue stick now. And we're just doing glue stick for ease and simplicity because most people I think have glue sticks, but you could certainly use PVA glue or double sided tape for this. And I'm going to carefully put glue on the two tabs. Just watch me do it before you do it. Okay, I don't want any glue to accidentally stick on the back. So that's why I have it kind of open when I'm doing that. But now I need to tuck them under and I'm going to line up. I'm going to place this on my base. I'm going to line up the bottom edge with the bottom of the card and that folded center line with the center fold. So there are many ways to do this. I could have had this here and put the glue on now and tucked it under. But basically this is what's happening. I'm gluing those two tabs down. My center folds are lined up. And then I want to quickly open that and make sure nothing extra got glued down. So you should be able to fold the card now. And the center fold pops up and out. OK. So this is a um, there are many, many techniques in pop ups, but this is a, a fun one because 
it folds back flat and it looks interesting when it's unfolded or opened all the way. And then it has a different look when it's folded and can be set and displayed. Okay, so next we're gonna take this the shorter landscape and the piece of paper. And again, same thing, you can trace it on the front. The reason I would trace it on the front is if I had a certain part of the image that I wanted to capture. I don't particularly care, so I'm going to turn it over and turn the tech template over and trace it onto the back and cut that out. I saw there was a question about glue stick. Yeah, any glue stick is fine. I happen to have, um, this is a rice paste glue stick from Washi Arts, which is a paper supplier. And um, it doesn't dry out. Some glue sticks dry out. So I like that it um, lasts for a long time. Um, I also like Yuhu, um, which is an archival glue stick, which it's German, but you can find it online and in art supply stores. Now I was saying earlier when we were typing our favorite landscapes into the chat, um, once you make this card, maybe you will be inspired to make your own landscape. And um, you know, we ha we're having a layered element with several layers, but this could just be one, like the Golden Gate Bridge could just be itself or maybe there would be something in front of it clouds maybe <laughs> you know it's foggy there a lot um okay i'm going to give you a second to catch up again this is my second piece um this one is going to fold and glue the same way um, I just taught this at my local bookstore and my template is a little bit shy on this one, which I should have said before, but when you, so you're gonna fold this in half the same way, backside to backside, it's more visible this time, but your little tabs, make them a little bit shorter than a quarter inch, if you can, no long, no, no wider than a quarter inch because, uh, it's a little close. You'll see when you get to it, it'll work, but it's a little tight fit there. Okay, so I've got the same form that I had before. And I do the same thing where I'm gonna line up the center line. This one, I'm gonna actually show you a different way to glue. So I'm going to set it in place so I'm lining up the bottom, got my tabs unfolded. And I'm going to just lift up and put glue on that tab. I've got my center line lined up. Now I'm gonna tuck that tab under and stick it down. And so what I was saying, it's tight, it's gluing right next to See on the inside here, you can actually, if it's bigger, you can tuck it, maybe tuck it a little bit underneath. Um, I have someone make my templates for me, so it's, I didn't catch that in time. So the next one, I'll do the same thing. Still got that center line lined up. I'll come over here and I'll put glue on this tab. And then I'll tuck that under. And then again, you wanna quickly just test that it folds and pops up properly. Now you see the little space in between. And then I'm gonna fold it all the way and just sometimes the center lines aren't exactly right. So you can kind of force, force that fold and it'll take the right shape 
Another thing that sometimes happens is there's a little paper that sticks out down here. Um, I'll talk about that at the end. We can trim that. All right, how are we doing? Uh, raise your hand if you're ready to move on. Okay. I'll give you one more minute. Yay. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Okay, so now we're going to take the long skinny piece and um, uh, someone's asking, Shannon's asking the weight of my, my card stuff. Mine is 80 pound. And then all of my other papers are more of a text weight, like maybe an 80 pound text. So, um, the last piece, not the last piece, the next piece is this long skinny one. And don't go ahead of me on this one. This one's going to glue a little bit different. Okay. So, but we're going to cut it the same way. I'm going to flip my sheet over, trace it on the back, and cut it out. And obviously, if you were going to make this again, you could vary your shape of your mountains. But you have to you have to um, look at how they're going to relate to each other, so that you get to see all of the mountains one behind the other. And obviously, you could do these with many different kinds of paper. And I look forward to seeing what you all are using at the end here. So I'll give you just a moment to cut that and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do differently. Okay. All right, I'm going to fold this one from the front and make a couple marks on the front just beca because um, I think it's a little easier to see and grasp. So we're just gonna fold it a little differently, but I'm gonna take the template and just use it as a guide to make a little mark uh, where I need to make my folds. So I'm just gonna lift, raise it up a little bit so I can mark where the folds are going because this one is not it's asymmetrical you don't fold it exactly in half okay and then this one just do it with the template first you're going to fold on the center line which again it's not exactly the center see how i have extra space there and then you're going to fold the tabs forward rather than back. Because if you look at my sample here, you see how I have integrated that into my design. So the tabs show instead of tuck underneath. So we're gonna, it's in a little accordion. And then you'll do the same thing to your actual paper. 
So you're going to fold on that, the central line, but it's not the center as a mountain. And then the other two fold forward as valleys. And you're going to keep the bottom edges all lined up. That's how you know that your lines will be parallel. Uh, because again, the, the way this pop-up works is that all of the lines are parallel to each other, all the folds. And then since we have those folded forward, um, it's pretty straightforward how this gets glued. So again, I'm lining up my center fold, lining up my paper along the bottom edge of the card, and then I'll put glue on these now uh, triangular shaped tabs. And then I'll glue that down on the back side of those tabs is where the glue goes. And then I'll fold that again and make sure everything is working. Now, if you, well, my, my fold is a little off. So I'm gonna do what I said, I'm gonna smush it. It's just like less than a 16th, just to get that fold in the right place. And then another thing about designing pop-ups is that you, you want to uh, make sure that your folds don't come out the front edge. So I've designed this so that everything is hidden within the card. But when I was designing the first time, it stuck out. So there's a lot of little things that happen within the design process. Helen, I'm wondering about um, the way that you glued the final or the third one. Mm -hmm. um, if you had glued one and two with the, instead of tucking the flaps in, if you had had them out, they're obscured by the first one. Is there a structural reason that can't happen? Um, no, it could happen that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so she's just saying that these, the other tabs could be glued out the same way. Um, you might see one of them a little bit because it would come out right here and not it wouldn't be bad um but maybe in my initial design i was seeing it and then um but yeah no there's no structural reason okay now i was mentioning if there's a little bit um of paper sticking out here you can trim that um, with your scissors or you can take a ruler mine's not bad i'm not going to bother but sometimes if your folds aren't exactly parallel, something might hang underneath. Um, and you get ideas for mistakes. So that could be um, something that you took to the extreme where you did want something to hang out in a future version. Okay, so now we've got um, this back piece which is optional, um, but it's kind of fun because you can um, use this. It's, a, it's from a rectangle. I'll give you the size in a moment. You can use the, I would call this the negative shape, and then you can put the positive shape on the front. See? So that's where I'm going with this. Now, I didn't tell you to cut the piece exactly this size, but if you have a piece of decorative paper that's also four and a half by 11, let's do that. And then you'll be able to cut these two shapes out of it. And this is the template piece. But again, wait for me because we are not cutting this bottom line. Um, that was our other piece. And I just um, was able to put these all on one sheet of paper for the templates. So we're only using the top edge and I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do. But I'm gonna give you a minute to get a piece cut to four and a quarter inches by 11. You did get this template, it's right here. 
So see, this was cut into two pieces. So now we're using this piece. And, and I dropped it into the chat again. If for some reason you didn't get the templates at all. Yeah. So it's in the chat right now. So what are we not cutting? Um, just don't cut yet. Just cut a piece to four and a quarter by 11 inches, a rectangle. Not that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna give everybody a minute to get that ready. Um, there's a question about if you'll be posting this on the website, or are you just gonna send out the recording to the registrants? I will post this on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, and I will send you a link to that YouTube video, um, probably tomorrow with but by tomorrow Helen's yes very prompt with her video postings very prompt I try to be oh no, you are you are okay so now if you've got that four and a quarter by 11 we're gonna i'm gonna do the same thing i marked the front it's less obvious because there aren't any score lines but i can see my marking so you want it oriented this way if you're going to cut on the front or flip it over. And of course I chose a paper that's black. It's gonna be hard to see my pencil mark. So you see if this is a little smaller than my sheet. I wanna center it more or less. It is not terribly crucial. And I'm going to trace just the top. That's what I'm saying. You do not trace that bottom. You just want the top of this mountain. And then I'm going to cut along that line. So now I've got two pieces and the first one I'm going to use is the one with the rectangular edges. If you've got it cut out, you can go ahead and fold. Um, the one with the rectangular edges gets folded front side to front side. Just score that, that little bit. And then the other one is going to fold in half backside to backside. These folds are always reversible if you mess up. And then this, this piece fits in here as a background. Now, if you want, to, you want to look at it, how it's going to glue on there. And if this mountain comes pretty close to, to that edge, if you want to trim and make a little more space, you can do that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to put this in place and fold this over and put glue on the back. Of, so I'm going to glue one side of the card at a time. And I like to have pretty good coverage, especially around the edges. So nothing kind of pokes up and can get caught. But I'm going to put it in the center everywhere too. And if I've got that in place, I can actually fold the card over. And it'll glue in place. No, don't do that. Sorry. Don't do that. Uh, because some of it actually hit my landscape. So just unfold it and lay it down. It has to be glued in this position. <laughs> That's a good teaching moment. I'm going to line up that top a little better. Okay. And then I'll just take the other half 
fold that back, put glue, especially along the edges, and then unfold that back out. And there is my completed landscape. I'm gonna do a couple other things. I've, my paper's sticking out a little, so I am gonna just take a ruler and do some trimming. Now be careful if you do this, if your glue is still wet, it's better to wait till it dries. You could use scissors too. And then if you want to, you can glue the mountain form on the front. And that makes for a nice front of your card. And this actually is something someone figured out at my event the other night. I hadn't thought of this, so I love that. And I love that things like that happen in the paper year where something you never would have thought of, uh, you get to see someone else did. So when you're doing this, just make sure I'm, I'm classic for putting things upside down, right side up. See, I have my card the other way. I wanna make sure that I have it. Um, so it's my landscapes match in terms of orientation. Now I'll just do the other half. And then obviously you could uh, collage other parts or write a message or, you know, there's lots that could be done with this. You could have cutouts in the background, which would reveal more of the background paper. So many fun things. So, oh, I'm seeing slow down. Liz's. Okay, this is super fun to see what people are doing. And um, does anybody need me to show anything else before I come off of uh, showing my hands? Does everybody got it? Then I'll bring my face back and um, You, let me first, I want to answer any questions. If anybody has any questions about the project or the paper year. And then we can do some show and tell. So when we get to the show and tell portion, what works the easiest is if you, um, those of you who are ready to show, put your hand up and then I will, um, when it's gonna be, when you're gonna be the next person to show, I will ask you to unmute yourself. So that's when you know to get ready. Um, are we ready to start doing show? Sure, All yeah. All right, uh, Nancy McDougall, if you can unmute. Oh, sorry. It's Nanette. Oh, <laughs> oh like, sorry, Nancy. sorry. That was my okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And then okay. everybody else put yourself, put speaker view so that you can see the card large. So uh, now here, I'm not here. seeing. I'm going to do add spotlight. Okay. Okay. Hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. Hey, let's okay. see. Beautiful. Oh, I love the shape you cut for your background too. Yeah, you did a little different. Beautiful. Yeah. It turned out really well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for this coming. This was a fun class. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Donna Heron. Okay, we see you. Hold up your card, Donna, so we can see it. Uh, I think you're muted, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's the front and the inside. Beautiful. I love it. I like the white space. 
that's for, made by your just your plain card. It, it really highlights the other papers. Thank you. Are you taking screenshots, Lori? No, not no, I wasn't because I okay. was. Um, that's fine. You do that. I'm going to take some. Can you yeah. hold that up again? Open. Okay, one second. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Rebecca Lyons will be next. Okay, beautiful. And then open it. It's a little dark, but yeah, I see it. Gorgeous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Liz Tibiot Dale. I went rogue um, and using paper that I marbled on Saturday with Sandy Brayman at the Virginia Center for the Book. All right. I made this as a card for a friend who had a bad fall. So it's Aww. going to her to slow down. Oh, beautiful with the marbled papers. And how did you do the slow down with a rubber stamp? No, that's just uh, laser printed. Oh, it's printed. Okay. Beautiful. So uh, you had it prepared. Wow. Um, on Dina, um, sorry. Okay. I, yeah, that's okay. I, I couldn't um, see your last name, something was obscuring it. Okay. So oh, I just I used the white Mina paper because that's all I had. Um, yeah. Beautiful. It looks great, white on white. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Barb Helander. Okay. Hey, Barb. Hi. Let's see what you got. Okay. So this is, this is mine. And I also had to go rogue a little bit as well because I had everything all pre-cut before the class. Oh. And, and what I wanted to do was this particular paper in the background, I thought looked like a bit of a starry sky. So I didn't have any more of that paper to make the mountain to do that kind of reverse thing for you. So right. what I ended up doing was count, cutting my mountain and then I just slipped it in behind and glued it on top. <laughs> ah, clever. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, have I know. I apologize that <laughs> I didn't say to cut the papers out. So I will. I will say you were just working ahead. I um, was working. I, I was taking I a also chance and oops. didn't anticipate. I didn't uh think to say oh yeah you're going to use the negative part of that yeah so, yeah so I, yeah. I already had that bit cut for yeah, the background great. mountain and that for the sky but it fit it fit yeah Little puzzle piece. yep Yay. yeah that's great thank you uh-huh um beth stockdale you're muted hi beth hi oh yeah you're hi. good um I made a birthday card for a friend of mine for um, I Oh, beautiful. So it's got flowers and then it's got butterflies in here. Um, oh, so, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's Very cool. nice. I'll finish it front later and everything. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, Deborah West. I think y'all are ahead of me in doing this. I think y'all have done this before. So here, I just oh, good colors. Yeah. But when I fold it, I get I got. Uh, sorry. I think, I think, we lost your audio. You don't seem to be muted. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, open it up again. Let me look at the inside. So for some reason, yeah, you just, uh, I think mm, you used my template. I'm not sure why it's, you could fix that. Oh, I'm just seeing where you glued. Yeah, it's just all a little different than mine. It looks beautiful. So you just need to pull that center back, but I'm not able to tell you how to do that simply. <laughs> so thank you, yeah. Okay, uh, next is Lois James. James? Hi, Lois. 
Can you unmute? You're muted. Unmute myself. There you go. There okay. You go. Okay. I guess this is the way I hold it. <laughs> yeah, hold it up a little higher. Okay. Ooh, a pretty paper. Oh, in front of me. Yes, I'm. I'm uh, loving using my papers. My paper. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that looks wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. Okay, we we'll show like three more. Okay, then, so that'll be Susan Canelwith Klein, Andrea Teodorini, and then Annette Bus Busman Busman. So next, Susan. Hi. Um, I, I used I used a calendar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I plan on cutting the mountains into waves. <laughs> the oh, yeah. <laughs> and maybe putting something in the blank blue area. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. By the way, I invite everyone to post your finished um, landscapes on Instagram. And tag me, Helen Hebert, and I'll share it. And you could do a video, which would be fun, or just a photo. Okay, next. Uh, sorry, um, Annette Busman. I seem to have lost the one that I was going to have before, Teo Dorini. Yeah. Uh, okay. But let's do Annette because I've got her. There we go. Um, Fantastic. And. I love it. Beautiful. Uh, Thank you, Annette. Yeah. Okay. And um, Andrea, I so assume you're still ready? ready? I'm still ready. Okay. Ready. Yeah. Gorgeous. Oh, I love that paper. I cut mine out first, um, too, before the video, and I cut it out backwards. <laughs> oh. So you had to recut. Uh huh. Yeah, it looks great. Thanks for coming. Okay. okay, let's do a couple where everybody holds up. I'm sorry we don't have time to show everyone's, but I'd love to do a couple screenshots with everyone holding up. Okay, are you going to do oh, those, Helen? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, okay. All right, um, let me do one. Okay, I'm just gonna flip through my screens here. Here's the second one. Thank you. And then I've got a third screen. Okay, that was it for people showing on video. <laughs> okay, well. There's a, there's a note from a Andrea Teodorini saying, um, well, I think it's a good, good thing. Perhaps number the template to show four pieces. I thought the top of the long one was trash. Um, yeah. Okay. And I've jumped yeah. with that assumption in other projects and been sorry. Right. <laughs> yes, but I have to just, this is, you know, there are always little things like this. And I did mention, if you look back at my notes where you downloaded the template, I didn't say it on the template, but I did say in the notes that you need, there are four pieces and you cut the one apart. So just in my defense. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. If you have any questions, I'll just stay on for a few minutes. And I hope is your, some um, of you joining the paper year. What yes? is your hashtag on Facebook? I mean, on Instagram? It's Helen Hebert, H-E-L-E-N-H-I-E-B-E-R-T. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And that, that is in the chat, in the yes. uh, dropped into the chat and everyone can save the chat by uh, going into the chat on the lower right corner, there's three dots and there's a, a, a option to save chat and it'll save it to your computer um, in a folder called Zoom. And so you'll have it right away, but I will send it to yeah. you as well with the replay. Thanks, great to see everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Helen. Thank you. Really Helen. nice, as fun. always. Thank you. And I love your book. Oh, good. Thanks. Share pictures of what you make from the book, too, on Instagram oh, I will. with me. Yeah, thanks. Actually, I love all your books. I think I have them all. There's six. 
I know. You can count and see. Yeah. I've been I've been hoarding them. Oh, good. Yeah. So glad. All right. Well, we'll see you all uh, around the interwebs and maybe in person. Some people someday. <laughs>